So thanks, Justin, for the introduction. Um, so I'll be presenting on a couple of embodied carbon proposals that NBI, along with some local architecture and design firms, have submitted to the city of Seattle in collaboration um, with a few additional organizations. Um, one second. Before moving on to the main topic of the presentation, I wanted to give a quick overview of what we do at NBI. NBI does work on both operational and embodied carbon, and we integrate research, policy development, and market transformation to achieve decarbonization of the built environment. In this presentation, I'll go over the timeline of the Seattle Building Code proposals, provide a quick overview of what's already happening on embodied carbon locally in Seattle and King County. Um, I'll go over some input we've received from industry, from contractors, steel, and concrete professionals on these particular proposals. Um, I'll provide an overview of the concrete and steel proposals that we submitted to the city and any next steps and how you can get involved in the policy process. Um, I also wanted to uh, add a caveat that I'm presenting this with the assumption that majority of the audience understand embodied carbon and the importance of it. So I won't talk about it here, but let me know if you do have questions. Um, so in terms of the timeline, uh, in, in January, a Seattle city staff member reached out to New Buildings Institute and a few local architecture and design firms and encouraged us to submit a proposal on embodied carbon for the 2021 Seattle Building Code. Um, however, we had to submit a proposal within the same month. month. It was a very tight timeline. So during January, we wrote up some draft and body carbon proposals for steel and concrete. Uh, we also held stakeholder meetings with contractors, concrete and steel professionals to get input. And after making some changes to the proposals, we submitted them to the city of Seattle by mid-January. And then right now, the proposals are being discussed by the Construction Codes Advisory Board as we speak. Um, that board will give a recommendation to the Seattle Department of Construction and Inspections. Um, after that, the city staff will decide whether they want to continue with the proposals. If they do choose to continue with them, the proposals will move to the city council and the mayor. Um, if, the, if the proposals get passed by city council and the mayor, um, building permits submitted in July will need to comply with the requirements unless the enforcement is postponed by one year to 2024, which is actually what we prefer um, and I'll talk about that later. Um, so moving on to what's happening right now already with embodied carbon locally. Um, it turns out that King County already has some general commitments in the King County Cities Climate Collaboration and the King County Strategic Climate Action Plan. Um, in fact, since earlier this year, King County already requires all county construction projects to have environmental product declarations for concrete mixes. And in 2024, they're planning to add global warming potential requirements for concrete used in county projects. And the county plans to add similar requirements for steel and other materials. Seattle, on the other hand, has, has a few building demolition and salvage requirements, and they do aim to increase the amount of building material that is reused and recycled, but there's not much else going on in the city level with embodied carbon. So if these steel and and concrete proposals get passed, it will be um, the biggest action the city has taken so far on embodied carbon. Um, Sound Transit Authority, however, has some uh, required embodied carbon reporting in their projects for a few years now. Um, they required that for all their projects, 75% of the concrete used by volume has to have an EPD for it. Um, there are no global warming potential requirements that have to be met yet, um, but reporting is obviously an important first step. Um, and you can find all the requirements in this link here. Um, so moving on to what kind of industry stakeholder input we've received. Um, first off, we met with the contractors, which were generally very supportive of the proposals. Um, however, they did recommend postponing the enforcement of the requirements by at least one year in order to give more time for industry and the market to adjust. For both steel and concrete, they wanted to see an industry average global warming potential requirement or below. Um, and the next group we met with was the concrete group. They were a little less optimistic than the other groups on these proposals. 
Um, over 20 concrete professionals attended the meeting. They were a mix of both local and national concrete firms and organizations. Um, the group was concerned a little bit about the type timeline and they wanted to see what included in the requirements. The concrete stakeholders also showed interest in seeing more cross-sector collaboration and they were interested in market-driven solutions to achieve decarbonization. Um, they said also that if the proposals pass, they would like the city to track the submitted environmental product declarations in a publicly accessible database um, so they can get some benefit out of that information. Um, lastly, we held a meeting with steel professionals and they were generally supportive of having some embodied carbon requirements for steel. Um, they mentioned that they would prefer 100% of the steel having to comply with the GWP requirements, that there's no unfair advantage given to imported steel, which is more likely to not have an EPD. They also said that the vast majority of domestic steel producers already have EPDs and tracking compliance with the GWP requirements would be quite feasible. They did not recommend a weighted average approach um, and they also wish to see what included in the GWP requirements. Um, I'll now go over quickly um, about the two proposals that we ended up submitting to the city. Um, so the concrete proposal that we submitted to Seattle is for projects that are 50,000 square feet and larger. It only applies to ready mix concrete. Um, and 100% of concrete must meet the weighted average GWP limits that are shown in the table to the right. These limits are based on the regional industry-wide averages. Um, and then this slide shows the weighted average calculation. This is a preferred approach because of larger projects using several mixes and sometimes several concrete suppliers. Uh, for compliance, concrete providers must provide EPDs showing the GWP value of each mix. And then the design team will review during the submittal review process and confirm compliance. And at the end of the project, the code official should be provided a summary of the compliance. Uh, similar to the concrete proposal, the steel proposal applies only to projects 50,000 square feet and larger. Um, and these GWP limits are based on 120% of the industry-wide average. Also, the steel proposal does not utilize a weighted average approach. Instead, there are prescriptive GWP targets that each type of steel must meet. And this was based off of the feedback from the industry stakeholders. Uh, we'll now go over the next steps in the policy process and how you can get involved. Um, so, as I mentioned, we already submitted the steel and concrete proposals in mid-January. Um, and now as we speak, they're being discussed in the Construction Codes and Advisory Board. Uh, my colleague, Webley Knowles, Bowles, Webley Bowles from NBI and some other proponents and supporters are attending the meeting um, and giving more information on the proposals that I, than I am currently. Um, and then the board will make a recommendation to city staff so if you are interested, you are more than welcome to give testimony in this meeting that's happening today, um, or even write a letter of support. I'm not sure how effective a letter will be since they are meeting today, but you are more than welcome to. Um, if you do email them with any testimony, make sure you're emailing Micah and Jennifer from the city. And uh, feel free to email me if you would like a letter template of support or just to get periodic updates on ways you can support the effort. Uh, because after this codes advisory board, um, it will go to the city council, and which might happen anytime between March to May. So we'll need more support there too. Um, and yeah, that will be all. So let me know if you have questions and um, yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm.